Hi. So today I'm going to be going over a motherboard for somebody who's actually taking the class. He brought it in, it was dead, and I'm going to go over what it is that I did to fix it. Uh, this is somebody that I actually wound up firing about three or four years ago, and he opened his own store since about three or four blocks away. And this is one of the things that I want to talk about. This is one of the things that I've brought up before is, you know, should you see your employees as competition? Should you see your ex-employees as competition? Should you work really hard to not, you know, to not um, let them ex advance or to let them learn or to let them move on and do their own thing? And, you know, he got fired. <coughs> he got fired and he opened a store that does the exact same thing that we do about three blocks away. And... I don't care. I sell him parts. I fix his boards. He's going to be learning over the next five days how to fix motherboards from me and Jessa and me. And like, that, that's what it is. It's like, you know, you people who are going off the fucking deep end about how terrible it is that your employee decided, wait a second, I don't want to make $7 an hour anymore. I want to work for myself and make my own money. How dare you? Like, and all that bullshit. Like, you people who are going off the deep end on that and how that's going to spell the end for your business. He opened a store like one or two years ago. I'm still here. I'm still making money. I still get dinner at Friday night at Mazetto. I'm fine. Like, I don't care that somebody else has opened very nearby. And again, like, it, it's, that, it's that whole, uh, that stupid mentality of, like, that person does the same thing I do. I'm going to hate them. Why is it that the pizzeria, like, why is it that the owner of the pizzeria on this block doesn't, doesn't hate the owner of the pizzeria three blocks away? Why is it that the Dwayne Reed person doesn't hate the CVS person five blocks away? But why, while the repair person on this block has to hate the repair person three blocks away, or hate the repair person eight blocks away, or hate the repair person ten miles away because they're stealing my business. Again, Business is just fine. People are still walking in. I'm still fixing boards. And he's paying to take this class. So, I mean, really, like that. I'm making money off of the relationship. I'm learning off of the relationship because I got to fix something. I've, I've never fixed that particular problem before. I've never fixed that particular combination uh, that I'm going to be showing you. So I did learn something off of it. And, you, know, you just, just get out of the small-minded, simple-minded bullshit of this person does what I do. Because they do the same thing I do, they are in direct competition with me. They're taking food off of my plate. I must hate them. I don't care if you open upstairs for me. I don't care if you open next door to me. I don't care if you open over there. I don't care if you open in my basement. I don't care if you open in the street right in front of my store. I'll be just fine. I, I don't care, really. I have that level of confidence that my skill set is worth something, that I know what I'm doing, that I provide a good service, and that I know enough about what I do that I can transfer my knowledge base from here to something else if this doesn't become viable. I am confident enough in that, and I'm sure enough of myself that I don't care. I'm not, gonna, I'm not splitting hairs and like throwing stones at people because they opened up a few blocks away. Am I going to help his business for free? Fuck no. The class, you're paying for that class. The board, you're paying for that board repair. But am I, again, am I going to have this jealous, silly mentality? Like he also used to work for another repair shop in the area. And the owner actually came in because he's across the street from this place and is like screaming and screaming and bitching and like literally like trying to like rip the counter out of it and just this. You know, that's the sign of an insecure individual. That's the sign of an individual who's not really sure of himself. That's the sign of somebody who, who's, who doesn't really feel like he has a, a worth in what he does that feels like maybe he got lucky doing it and he's afraid that one day that might go away. Whereas again, if you're good at what you do and you're excellent at what you do and you have a good mindset and you have a good attitude and you're always open to learning new things and you're always open to doing new things, you'll find it just doesn't matter if you do the same thing as other people. So now that that little lecture is over, let's move on to the actual board repair. So today we're going to go over a retina that was not turning on. It had a few issues. I couldn't, I can't quite say that I fully repaired it. And when you see what it looks like, you'll understand. Uh, so I'm going to still be getting used to this new microscope that I have here, at least until I get the whole thing with the, it. This, nothing here is stable. I swear. Anyway, but yeah, I have to get used to the whole uh, it's all, it's blurry on one side, but yeah, it's, this is, this is pretty cool. So I'm, when future videos are going to be really, really cool once I get the whole microscope thing situated, because you're going to, you're going to actually be able to see, um, what I'm doing, but I'm going to be able to see what I'm doing too, because usually I can only see out of one eye and that sucks. So we have some bullshit going on here. Some, <clears throat> I haven't bothered cleaning any of this up yet. Let me, uh, yoink, I got to get used to the new lever. There we go. 
All right, so uh, adjustable zoom. <coughs> so yeah, we have that. Oh, the microscope is doing that thing where it's trying to give a blowjob again. See it? It's going down, 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 stop. I don't want... Microscope is turning into damn Miley Cyrus. Come. Okay, anyway. <clears throat> So, here's what we're doing. Oh, you're doing it again. Amano makes some pretty kick-ass microscopes. They really do. But this stand, like whoever came up with this needs to be kicked in the balls. Or they need a girlfriend or something. Like, You can tell that they really need a girlfriend or to get laid or to jerk off because you're designing microscope stands that... Just go whomp, right down on your lap. It's like, is there something you want to tell us about? Do you want to speak with the rest of the class? Like, is there something you'd like to tell the therapist? Something missing in your life, maybe? For fuck's sake. Anyway, so yeah, we have a wire over there. Let's go on to the other, <coughs> other side of the board. And it, it don't look neat at all because it just doesn't. So yeah, we have it going from there to there. I'm going to show what that's for in a minute. And then we also have this. This That's not really bullshit. This. This is fucking bullshit. So this, like, uh, yeah. This here is, oh, uh, we're, we're going to talk about what all that shit's for and uh, <coughs> what was going on with it and why I did the things that I did. Because this is not real time. I think I've spoiled all of you with the real time board repairs. Okay. So what was going on? So on this board, I was going through my list of power rails. <coughs> Fucking call. <coughs> I am sick and tired of being sick and tired. Okay, where's the power rail list? So one of the things I always tell you guys to do is go through the list of power rails. And see what's missing. Why would you keep it on page three? Like, it's not like power rails are the first thing you should check. It's not like you should put the first thing you should check on the first page. No. Apple, Apple has to put it on, like, page... What is it on here? 65. Okay, the thing that I tell you is the most important thing. The thing that you're supposed to check first is on page 65 of the fucking schematic. Idiots who write this documentation. All right, anyway. But you, you know that, like, technical writing, that's actually a job. Like, this is not like the engineer is going, okay, I'm designing the board. Okay, I want the SPI ROM chip to go here. Okay, let me just draw that. No, this is somebody's job to do this. They get paid good money to do nothing but write documentation. And that dumbass decides to put it, uh, like, the, again, the most important thing on page 65. Just dumb. Just dumb. Anyway, I check PP bus G3 hot, it's there. I check... Obvi I don't even bother checking DC inboard because if I have any power on the board, obviously the charger is getting to it. I check PP3V42, it's there. I check PPVRTC G3 hot, it's there, but it's missing someplace, but we're going to get to that in a second. I check PP5VS5, it's there. I check PP5VS4, it's not. So in my head, I go, ding, we don't have an S4 power state. I check PP5VSO, obviously it's not there because you need PP5VS4 before you get to PP5VSO. So what these are over here, these are different power states for the machine. S5, it's off. S4, it's hibernating. S3, you're in suspend. So hibernate is when you save all the contents of your computer to your drive, all the stuff that's in memory gets saved to the drive. Then when you turn it back on, it just restores all that information from the, from the drive. It's slower than S3. S3 is where you suspend, you save everything to memory. So usually when you close your computer, you're putting it to, uh, to, to sleep, that's suspend, that's an S3 state. SO is when you're on and the computer's open and you're actively using it. So if you don't have the rails necessary for S4, you're obviously not going to get anything at SO. It's like, you know, it's like asking a baby to run before the baby has, uh, has walked. So 
Then I check PP3V3S5 and it's there. I check PP3V3S4 and it's not there. And then this kind of starts to click in my head, okay? All the S4 power rails are not, are not clicking in. So I go, you know, let's go and see what's responsible for this. Yeah, Adobe's on top today. Wow, you're actually, actually, you're actually acting like a 6-core processor with 16 gigs of RAM and SSDs in RAID 0. Look at that. It's like instant. This is never going to happen again, so appreciate this. I'm hitting enter in the PDF reader, and it's just bam, 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 bam. This, again, this, this really doesn't ever happen. Okay. PP3v3s4 comes from, let's see, where does it come from? So that comes from PP3v3s5. So this here is a switch that's going to take PP3v3s5 on input, V in, voltage in, use your brain. Again, it's not all spelled out for you, but use your brain. And it's going to turn it into V <coughs> oh, V out, which is PP3v3s4, based on S4 underscore PWR underscore enable. So on. So voltage in, voltage out, and do I turn on? Again. You don't have to look up that chip. You don't have to get a pin out to understand what it does. You just got to use your brain. But if you can't use your brain, you can always Google TPS22920 and you might find information on it. So, S4 power enable is... Well, is created by this chip. This chip is no stuff. Okay. Next. No stuff means it's not on the board, which means that ultimately I was getting trolled by looking that up to begin with. So, uh, so, if, the chip, so if the chip that creates that signal doesn't exist, I'm not going to figure that out right now. Let's, so I just go, okay, let's try a PP5VS4. And I yawned a little bit because I was tired from spending my whole day coughing. Look, this is a chip responsible for PP5VS4 and PP3V3S5. And PP3V3S5 becomes PP3V3S4. So you have two enables on this chip, right? You have S5 power enable, and my PP3V3S5 was there. Then you have P5VS4RS3EN. That's one confusing fucking acronym. But if you look up what this chip does, this side enable enables this rail, and this side enable enables this rail. So before I go about troubleshooting this whole circuit, because this is a lot of stuff going on over here, and again, I can make it really simple for you if I have a few minutes, but I don't even want to bother with that right now. I just want to know, should I even be troubleshooting this? Let's see if the enable signal is there. Again, before you go measuring all these resistors, before you start going down a rabbit hole, ask yourself, am I going down the right rabbit hole? So... Why am I gonna me why am I gonna fuck with all of this and see if this resistor is one ohm and this resistor and you know like and this inductor is good and this capacitor is good and this resistor is good. why bother before seeing if the chip is even being told to turn on? So I check my to try to get this out without coughing P five V S four R S three E N and it's zero. So I wonder, where does that come from? Because that signal is what's going to be telling this chip to turn on that power rail. What, what is, where is that coming from? So I search through my PDF, and I see, ah, it's coming from here. Now this is going through the, these resistors and this diode that's not actually there, but they just put it there to fuck with me. And this resistor, it's coming from PM Sleep S4L. So P5VS4RS3 underscore enable is coming from PM underscore sleep underscore S4 underscore L. So I measure PM sleep S4L, and it's zero. <laughs> so let's... <coughs> oh, I'm tired of coughing. So PM sleep S4L comes from my CPU. Remember what I said about how on the Haswell and above, the PCH and many platforms is actually integrated into the CPU? So the PCH, or the MCP as they used to call it, used to control all these functions in the machine. 
like powering on. So they used to have the CPU and an MCP, or a CPU and a PCH. Now, to make life easier and simpler, they have the CPU, they have the PCH inside the CPU, which is why the CPU looks a little bit bigger on Haswell platforms. And you can, that's supposed to come from here. So my PCH must be bad, right? Because it's not creating that signal. I should just walk over to my BGA machine and be a monkey and replace the chip because the chip must be bad, right? No, use your brain. That's one of the things that I'm always telling you here. And that's one of the things that, that, that just kills me with BGA culture. Because again, they got these forums that are, that are for nothing other than BGA chip replacement. They do nothing but you know talk about how to replace BGA chips. Nothing really, And all they know how to do is replace BGA chips. The monkey can take the chip off the board. The monkey can reball the chip. The monkey can put the chip back on the board. But the monkey can't think. The monkey can't use his brain. And that's what I'm trying to get you to do. I want you to use your brain. And I want you to understand what's going on. Don't replace things before you think. So what else could cause that thing to not be creating what it needs? Well, let's go back to our schematic. Not the microscope. I said let's go back to our schematic. So we go over here. So how does this work? So on the left side, for system power management, we have a bunch of inputs. So power, per OK, per OK, RISM, RISIT, bat low, all this stuff. So we have a bunch of inputs over here and then a bunch of outputs over here without getting into reading the documentation and how this chip works, without getting into any of this, a bunch of inputs on the left, a bunch of outputs on the right. Maybe you need the inputs on the left to get the outputs on the right, right? So I'm going through all of these and I want to see if anything looks particularly funny. And what I find up looking at is PM underscore PCH underscore per OK. PM underscore PCH Underscore per OK, right? PCH power OK. My PCH is what creates the sleep signal. And is my PCH power OK? So I look in my U1950 area. And when you look in the U1950 area, instead of seeing a nice, healthy, nice looking chip, you see something that looks kind of like this. At least now that's what you see because that's after I've um, I've kind of sodomized it. But <coughs> but as you can see, there's a pin that's missing right over here. That, that that pad is gone. This component that was over there looked like shit. And if we go back to the board view, you'll see that. Right all where that's supposed to be. Let's see what that pad is for. That is pin 8, which is PP3V42 underscore G3 hot. So let's go back to the schematic, zoom in on this, and let's start thinking. What is this? What does this do? Well, if you Google it, you'll find out that it's a logic gate. But if you don't want to Google it, and you just want to use a little bit of the brain, you'll see that you have a power line over here. Then you have separate inputs. And then you have the output. So the way this works is very simple. If you have PP, if you have this input, all sys power good, then it's going to take PP3V42 underscore G3 hot and pass that through where it's going to become PCH sys power OK, which is what we want. But unfortunately, we don't have PP3V42 underscore G3 hot on this chip because the pad itself is actually burned and missing. So what I want to do is I want to go over to my donor board and I want to get myself one of those chips, right? Remember what I said about this business? Remember what I said about how you're constantly a dumpster diver? And <laughs> Okay, just to give you an idea. This is the board. This is what it's supposed to look like. This is what my donor board looks like. Do you think I have the chip that I need? No, I don't. So... <coughs> Fuck, did cough, man. <coughs> Lewis needs to get health care. 
You know, and this is this is one of the things about that. Like I was talking about how healthcare is bullshit in the other video. This cough may be annoying and it may be on like week number two. But the twenty five, thirty thousand bucks that I've probably saved by not paying money into a system that's designed to not give me that money back, I'll forget about these two weeks. I won't forget about twenty or thirty thousand dollars. Because somebody commented on that before. It's I'll be fine. Let's go back here. So what I did is I just took PP3v4 two underscore G3 hot and jumpered it over to pin three over here. So I don't care if all says power good or CPU VR P good are there, or any of these P goods are there. Who cares? So look, see, it even says over here, like, do we need this? Do we need this? Nah, I don't think we need this. They're saying, do we need this about something else that's probably really, really in... See, like uh, the Apple engineer thinks the same way I do, really. Like, yeah, like, do we, like, it really is, it's kind of funny reading this sometimes. Like, do we need this? No. And then I noticed after I did that that it still didn't work. So what else does a computer need to run? What else is needed? Hmm. Let's take a look in the schematic and go through and try to think a little bit about what else that you would need for a computer to work. But before I do that, let me reopen the PDF reader because Adobe decided to go to shit. Ah. <sighs> Okay, you don't get the block diagram anymore. Wow, they used to have a bunch of little cool-looking illustrations with arrows going between them, showing how everything worked. And that's just gone. They don't care. Tell me that that, that little diagram is gone, because that was really helpful for learning. Okay, it's gone. All right. One of the things that you need to know about computers, and I understand, I'm, I really, I understand if you don't know this from the beginning, and it's not something that you really can be expected to know. Computers need a clock. That's what it is. When I'm hitting this in open broad, when I'm hitting the shortcuts for open broadcaster, it's actually fucking up the PDF reader. Focus on that later. Computers need a clock in order to work. So you may have heard about clock cycle or clock rate or how fast a processor can work. But when something is communicating with something else, that's also done based on a clock. So if you have different pieces of a computer that are talking to one another, you need a clock. So if you have a PCH that's talking to other elements of the machine or a PCH that talks to a BIOS chip or a PCH that's creating signals, that needs to be done on some type of a clock. And one of the clock signals that's really important is the RTC clock. So let's see if my PDF reader will allow me to zoom in again. Oh. It is. That's very gracious of it. Thank you. Oh, you decided not to, right? As I, here we go. Okay, so every time I hit control on a number, it fucks that up. I got to look up why it's doing that later. PCH underscore clock 32 K underscore RTC X1. PCA, what the? That's not what I hit. I hit control F. PCH underscore clock 32 K underscore RTC X1. And that's created by U1900. So when I look in this area, I have PPVRTC underscore G3 hot. That's a power rail. Now that was actually present on my machine. It was present when I measured the probe point up here. It wasn't present. It wasn't present when I measured right by over here. And that capacitor almost didn't exist. And that made me very, very sad. So I replaced the capacitor. I replaced the chip. <coughs> <coughs> I'm not a smoker either, so lame. And this is what I get.
I should show you what the RTC clock actually looks like. It's something good to, to know. When, yeah, you, you measure it with an oscilloscope. You can use a frequency counter. A frequency, but I, I have, call me nuts. I, when I'm, I want to see things. I like being able to see things. And keep in mind, like when I started this, I didn't have an education in how to repair motherboards. I was learning as I went. So I figured that if I could actually see what was going on, that it would help me because I'm a bit of a visual learner. So you could explain to me how a buck converter works until you're blue in the face. But when you, when you show me, oh, it's a bunch of spikes and then zero and then 12 and zero and 12 and zero like that. And then that, that, that's, that, and it's switching. And then that gets turned on the other side into a clean voltage when it's averaged out. It makes sense. Even though it's a very, very simple concept, you can explain it to me in the classroom 50 times, but when I see it, it's easy. So people ask, that was a comment somebody made the other day, should I buy a frequency counter or should I buy an oscilloscope? If you're learning, I would, I would just recommend, like, try to find yourself a used uh, Regal or Rigol, however you're supposed to pronounce it, oscilloscope, because it, it really does assist in the learning process if you're starting out. It's, it's cool to be able to see things. I mean, it costs money, but... The money that you can make, the money that you can get from people if you know how to do this right is so ridiculously high that it really does offset the cost of tools like this that are going to help you learn. So the camera set to facial focus, so if I wanted to focus on the oscilloscope, I got to put my face near the oscilloscope. I don't feel like getting up to adjust the focus right now because I've been coughing my brain out all day. Where is RTC? Which one of these probes is RTC? There we go. Are you RTC? That's a clock signal. That is not RTC. That's 1.1 kilohertz. Okay, which probe point was it? You, no, you, no, no. Not even close. Why don't I just bring up the schematic and stop being a dumbass? It's true, like men really can't ask for directions. Like I could all I have to do is put these two probe points down and move over to the fucking board view and I could easily find out where RTC is after just a quick copy and paste, but No. I gotta be a man. I gotta figure it. Men are so fucking dumb. Like men are so stupid. This really is the motherboard repair version of just not stopping on the side of the road to ask for directions. Okay, fine. I give up. I cave. Where the hell is RTC? Somewhere over here. Of course, I find it right away when I click on there. I don't find it. That's what kills me. I don't find it right away when I'm... Uh, actually looking for it and have it measured but i knew i knew that was gonna happen i knew that as soon as i the first fucking thing i clicked on that board view was gonna be it <sighs> okay so this is what rtc looks like that is a bunch of distorted bullshit right so let's just that's a clock signal <sighs> well, focus on the face focus on my face in front of the oscilloscope See? All right. Good camera. Oh, hey. See? That is RTC. And my oscilloscope, actually, I said it's a measure frequency, so it says 32.68, which is what I want. But before, when I measured there, I had nothing, which was my hint that something was fucked up. And then after I measured and saw that I had no clock signal, I looked in the clock area, and I saw that it looked like a corroded pile of shit. And then, you know, we just go from there. And as always... I want to show you that this thing actually works, but I'm not going to be able to show you that it fully works because it also needs a BIOS chip programming. I'm not sure if it needs the chip replaced and, pro and reprogrammed or if it needs the, the, or if it just needs to be reprogrammed. Since this was originally liquid damaging corroded, I'm most likely just going to replace it with a new chip. So one of the things that you got to think about, by the way, that I've never mentioned in these other videos when you're dealing with Core 2 Duo platforms, replace the BIOS chip to your heart's content. Don't give a shit or worry about anything. When you're replacing the BIOS chip on an i5 or an i7 or a core platform, one of the things that you have to worry about is something called the Intel Management Engine. So that's the part that where uh, you know, the BIOS chip, the EFI ROM, the SPI ROM, whatever you want to call it, is going to be talking 
to the PCH, which in older platforms is discrete, and this platform is integrated into the CPU. And it talks about a lot of stuff that's important. It talks about things like, you know, okay, am I gonna am I gonna let the Wi-Fi card actually work and connect to networks, opposed to just see networks and not do anything? It talks about stuff like, should I let the graphics chip run at a usable speed, or should I freeze viewing a 240p YouTube video? And you're going to find that a lot of people who are complaining about their system running slow after doing something like, they, a lot of people are going to say, oh, well, I had my computer fixed, but now it runs really slow, or I fixed my own machine. This is, this is a good one, because I, I, like, I like talking about things that are practical. They go, I, you know, now it runs really slow. Like, it works, but when I go to watch a YouTube video, it freezes. And I'll just look at them like, so, okay, so, so you bought it stolen, right? Like, no. Like, okay, so the person you got it from bought it stolen. No. Okay, so you're the one who stole it. Because here's what it is. These fucktards on eBay, what they do is they take BIOS chips off of dead boards and they sell them for EFI unlock because the password is in, is in the, the, the SPI ROM, the, the BIOS chip. And what they do because they're ignorant fucktards that are more concerned making $45 helping you work with a stolen laptop than actually fixing technology is they don't reprogram the Intel management engine. You need to have a clean Intel management engine portion of the SPI ROM or else this is not going to work. <coughs> And the only reason that 99% of the time that your average person is touching that chip, because let me tell you something, they're not touching that chip because they're having problems with the PM Sleep S4L signal. They're touching it because they want the BIOS unlocked so that they can use their stolen laptop. Um, the thing is, they don't know anything about the, the management re engine region. So what they do is they buy that stupid chip off of eBay from some dumbass who advertises that I could fix BIOS unlocks. And the BIOS password gets unlocked, but then it runs really fucking unbearably slow. And it's not a usable computer. So what you need to do is you need to reprogram it with a clean dump and you need to rebuild the Intel management engine. There's a lot of documentation on how to do that. And it all sucks. It really does. Like there are a lot of forums where they say, we've told you how to do this. All you got to do is read. It's right there. And unlike, unlike my content where I'm literally fucking spoon feeding it to you, uh, that stuff, it, it is, oh my God, it is bad. They, <coughs> like, they miss out on so much shit. I mean, really, like, if you find a forum that is good at explaining to you how BIOS programming works, um, by all means, like, link it because a lot of people are going to need it. It's going to help a lot of people and, and be nice to them and donate to them. And, you know, like, really. Because when you get this stuff, there is no documentation for so many of these programmers. I mean, it, seriously, the, the, the programmer itself is so bad. There's no trackpad in this computer. And look what I'm doing. <laughs> That's 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 stupid. Anyway, it's 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 so bad. This that like you don't even know which way to put the BIOS chip in. Like I remember my friend got himself his own BIOS program and he asked me for BIOS chip and then he asked, "Do you have like twenty of these?" And he goes, "What do you need twenty of them for?" And he's like, "I don't know how they're oriented in here and I keep sending three volts or something to the wrong part and killing it." It's really because the documentation out there really, really, really sucks. And one of these days I'm going to get around to making a tutorial on how to reprogram it, how to deal with Intel management engine issues, but I just have too much stuff to do. Like there's, there's enough on my plate. So I've just been doing these, these videos as is. But as you can see, it boots. You can see that it's got that little, I don't know, the little gingerbread man thingy over there, so which means that I have, I hate to call this fixed, this is more fixed than a reball GPU, but it's not fixed to my standard because I have a jerry-rigged bullshit on there. But you can see that what, what I did actually works. And again, as I always say, if the, the day that the work that I do stops working, stop watching my channel. Like, I, you know, you want to be listening to people who are doing work that actually works. You want to be listening to people who are telling you how to do something when they are actually successful, doing the exact same thing that they're trying to instruct you on how to do. If, you're, if somebody's telling you, here's how you do X, but they're not showing you that they have run a successful business doing X or that they have not had excellent success doing X, ignore them. If they've had excellent success doing A, B, everything from A to W, but they haven't had success doing X, and they're trying to tell you how to do X, ignore them. Really, that, that, that's just one of my policies. And, I want, and you should follow it. So... Well, let me just to go back over the jerry-rigging portion because I want you to know what I did so that you can um, not, well, do better. Over here, I don't have this chip. I don't have U1950. U1950 
is important because it's a logic gate that's not going to let the PCH turn on and do the things it needs to do and send the signals it needs to send unless these all system power good signals are present. And what I did is I simply attached the power line for the logic gate to the output of the logic gate, totally bypassing it because I don't have one of those. Because these boards, again, like this, this is what I'm getting. This is what I work with. This is how I professionally fix boards in our lovely tech friendly marketplace. This, and I, and I do a pretty damn good job of it. Like, you know, you, you, you can Google my business. I, I get a lot of these in and I get a lot of these out. And we, we, we handle a good amount of volume and we kick ass. But like when, I, when people are asking, what is this right to repairable? Why is it important? This. So when I need to replace the SMC on that, so you see this board that has like this, uh, you know, Oscar the Grouch, or like the Cookie Monster fucking bit the side of it out. This is what I'm using. Really, this is what I'm using. This is my chip source. And, you know, and it ain't because I'm cheap. It's because there's no, it's because you know, where else am I going to find that stuff?